Okay, I think we finally need to address televisions over top of the fireplace. Hi everyone, welcome and welcome back to my channel. Today we are doing a follow-up, what I think is going to be a series on my channel, which is trends that I am over and done with. Of course, there's my usual disclaimer. Please don't take all this too seriously, you guys. I'm not gonna sit here and apologize for what I think, but I will say that I just want you all not to take this too, too seriously. So if you see yourself in some of the trends or some of the images that I'm gonna show in this video, let's just laugh it off and have a good time. Remember, I'm just a guy on the internet. Like, who cares what I think? If you love what you love and it's in your home and you love it and your family loves it, then who cares what I think. That doesn't matter. But at the same time, you probably care what I think about a little bit, otherwise you wouldn't have clicked on this video. So let's get started and go to some of the trends that I am super, super, super over. Okay, first trend that I'm really over, and I'm gonna call this gaudy glam. This is sort of that really over the top look of a glam style. So a little bit of glam can be fun, a little bit of sparkle, but sometimes things can go a little bit too far and they get a little bit too in your face and just like really fake and kind of gaudy. I'm talking about mirrored furniture. I'm talking about mirrored decor. I'm talking about um, like French bulldogs in mirrored or in white or in gold. Why is it always a French bulldog? by the way like why like give me a nice scruffy mutt any day but for some reason I have nothing against French Bulldogs but for some reason glam girls seem to really love French Bulldogs so I'm talking like really over the top glam look where everything is sparkle everything is gold everything is silver everything sparkles everything's metal it just overloads the senses with just too much stimulation and it kind of feels a little bit like you're trying to make your place look really expensive I think it just comes across as really manufactured really overdone and just not really very authentic. It doesn't feel natural. It doesn't feel timeless. It doesn't really feel elegant. Although I think, again, that's what people are trying to do. There are other ways that you can make your place look more expensive, a little bit more premium without necessarily resorting to like everything being super sparkly and in your face. Okay, the next trend that I'm really sick of, and this is a build on of the farmhouse kitsch because as many of you have pointed out, there were a few glaring omissions from that video of farmhouse kitsch that I'm sick of. It's not just the live, laugh, love signs. There's a few other offenders. Um, that is, Chippy paint that is really distressed, it's just old. We're talking barn doors and we're talking shiplap. Those three things specifically, I didn't include in the last video because I just created the super category that is farmhouse kitsch, but I think we need to address those three specific items. Okay, so first of all, I think it's a little bit time for some tough love. You don't live on a farm, you live in the suburbs. Okay, so let's just get that out of the way. The sooner you realize that, the sooner we can move forward together, okay? So shiplap, there are other ways that you can decorate your walls. First of all, I love that you're getting creative with your walls, but there are other ways besides what Joanna Gaines tells you you can put on your walls. So I get it, you're trying to make your walls really interesting and that's awesome, but there's other ways you can do it. You can uh, do panel molding of all sorts of different shapes, colors, and combinations. You can do vertical slat walls. Those are super, super cool right now. You can do wallpaper, you can paint it interesting in colors you don't have to just do bare white walls the point is is that shiplap has sort of taken over and it's too much and it's overkill and it just feeds into that overall farmhouse kitsch vibe that we're talking about barn doors okay we have reached peak barn door every door that you could possibly have made a barn door has been made if you follow me on instagram and you should because pretty much all i do is just go to different stores and make fun of items when i'm there if you do follow me you know that i have showcased some tremendously weird barn doors so we're talking media consoles we're talking pantries we're talking all sorts of different doors that used to just be normal that are now decided to be barn door we have reached peak barn door i'm over it i'm sick of it let's just be done with it please move on okay finally chippy paint um it's just old and it's distressed and there was a time when we thought that it was time to paint it or it was time to repair it or restore it which is super cool but now people are intentionally distressing it that is inevitably going to look tired it's going to look dated before you even start um i'm just a little bit over it but again this all feeds into a whole just ray dunn farmhouse vibe i just wanted to mention those three okay next thing i am sick of and you know what this is sometimes i kind of you know i it's easy you, you're, you're sitting there thinking nick that you're just playing it safe i mean gaudy glam farmhouse kitsch chippy paint i mean who doesn't hate those things but this one i feel like is everywhere and I'm really kind of tired of it and that is those really contemporary LED chandeliers. So LED lights totally have a place. If you want to put LED strips around your room and you want to put them in some recessed lighting, creates a nice beautiful glow, kind of adds a little bit of ambiance to your space, awesome. Those lights are meant to be hidden so that's really cool, like go for it, that's awesome. So when you're dealing with these LED lights that have just morphed into these sort of shapely sculptural but kind of weird chandeliers, I don't know, this is just personal taste, I don't really like them. I just Call me old-fashioned, but I just like a good old light bulb. You know what I mean? Like, 
I don't think everything needs to be this like really sculptural element. I'm just a little bit sick of them. If you have them, great. If you want like a really clean minimalist contemporary space, I suppose they can work. Um, I just don't particularly care for them. So I don't know, maybe I'm alone on that one. We'll see in the comment section, I'm sure. Okay, the fourth trend that I am really sick of is electric fireplaces. So, okay, so there was a time when having a real fireplace meant you chopped wood and you had a fireplace in the corner and you burned the wood, you know, like a fire. Um, then those became dangerous. And so the gas fireplaces used to be the fake ones, but then they sort of became the real fireplace. And the electric fireplaces sort of became the new stand-in as kind of like the fake fireplace. Ah, uh, basically I don't really like them because I just think they look super fake. The thing is with gas fireplaces is they were real. Okay, you didn't have the pile of wood in the corner, but it was still a fireplace. Like it was still a fire and it still made sense to us. But the thing is with these LED electric fireplaces, they just look corny, they look tacky. To me, they don't look at all real. Um, I don't care that you can change them into different colors. I don't care that you can make your fireplace purple. I don't think fireplaces really should be purple. Um, maybe a fireplace should just be, you know, a fire. And speaking of fireplaces, my fifth trend that I am so over is putting the television too high above the fireplace. Now, too high is the operative word. Now, I'm gonna lose no one's going to be happy with my answer on this one. Half of you are going to say it's amazing. Half of you are going to say it's ugly. Stop doing it. I'm actually going to say, I'm going to kind of split the difference here and say, I like a TV. So, mm, okay, I'm going to have to choose my words carefully. Here's the logic behind putting your TV over a fireplace, I think. Basically, you're trying to create a focal point in your space. With a fireplace, if you have one, you've created a beautiful, wonderful focal point in your living room. So you wanna work with that. The problem is, is that everybody naturally is going to have a television. Now, if you've ever seen in like a retail store in a magazine, they typically do not have a television. Do you notice that stagers or designers, they never put in televisions. And the reason is, is because they're ugly. Everybody hates televisions, but the reality is, is that although they are ugly, they're obviously incredibly useful. And everybody typically is going to put a television in their living Living room. So the logic behind the TV over the fireplace is sound. It's basically you've got a fireplace, it's a focal point, you have to put a TV. If you're not too careful, the TV is going to detract from the fireplace and basically your room is going to feel like it's a little bit of a mess. So the logic was you put the TV above and all of a sudden you have one beautiful focal point that you can have for the whole space. That's the logic. Here's where you run into problems with this, in my opinion, which again is just one opinion on the internet and Lord knows there's enough of those. The problem is, is that sometimes people have these giant mantles that then they put these televisions over top of and now it's completely looks ridiculous and it's not functional because you're actually straining your neck in order to look up your television. Then it's dumb and then you should not do it. So to me, this really comes down to how big your fireplace is. If you have something that's really low to the ground, um, that's fairly sort of kind of sleek and low and your TV above it is going to be a reasonable height, I'm okay with that. And that's maybe an unpopular opinion, but um, it's mine, so there you go. So when I say I'm over it, I would say I'm over these stupid televisions that are ridiculously high on top of these giant mantles. Other great options that can work is to put the fireplace and then put the TV next to it, put the TV on the opposite side of the, of the fireplace wall, so you're kind of having it on two different sides. That can work quite well, especially if you have kind of a larger space. Um, using those frame TVs that I think sort of, I have one of those and I quite love it, uh, Basically, it looks like art. It's not a regular television in the same way, and it just sort of looks like art when it's not in use. If you can hide it, like if you have some sort, not a barn door, but if you have a way that you can sort of hide the television, that can work really well. Um, so there's other different options that are out there, but just if your TV is gonna be too high above your fireplace, I just don't think you should do it. I'm going to link here to a playlist for design trends that I'm over because apparently this is a thing that I do here now. So part one is there and of course you're going to find this one and I'm going to continue doing this in the future. So feel free to subscribe for that and I'll see you all in the next video. Thanks. Bye.